Hello students welcome to Kenny's Educare a group of Kenny Solutions this is part 7 of lesson number 7 diversity in living organism now this is the last part where we are discussing on this diversity in living organism since we have discussed the five kingdom system which was given by R H Whitaker sir right you are aware of the five kingdom system so the first kingdom that we started was kingdom monera then we had kingdom protista kingdom fungi then kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia right so we have discussed on this five different kingdoms so you are aware of as uh, in kingdom plantae when you see or look around you you will see that there are many diversities which you can see with respect to plants and animals right so on the basis of that it has been seen that plant and animal jo hai they are further divided into different types okay so like i can say for plants we have five different divisions we have even studied those divisions right and for uh, you can say for kingdom animalia we have uh, you can say 10 different phylums that we have discussed right so uh i hope that till now you are aware of ki how do we do this like how this the 10 different phylums they are all together and how everything is been possible right then after that humne wo discuss kiya and after discussing on all these things we have discussed on uh, you can say now we know the characteristics all the 10 phyla that we have discussed phylum polyphera where they have pores on their body right and they are found uh, only in the uh, wet places right marine wet places you can say uh, because they don't have a uh, specialized cells like xylem and phloem right and even they are lacking through roots this this are the characteristics of the phylum polyphera that we have discussed then we have cnidaria okay then we have platyhelminthes now platyhelminthes are also called as flat worms because all the organism that comes under this they are almost flat from top to bottom so a good example of it is planaria then we have river fluke okay tape worm these are all example of the phylum that comes under platyhelminthes okay so we had like started all the characteristics of the 10 different phylums so we today we are going to discuss uh, like we are going to start with this kingdom animalia itself because we are left with uh, you can say kingdom vertebrata ka classes okay because kingdom vertebrata is further divided into six different classes so today we are going to start with those six different classes and the six questions which have been given i will be giving you the answer to it even i will like if you all can give it by uh, yourself because we have even completed the lesson and now one more part there is a nomenclature part also in this lesson which has been given so we are going to study on that nomenclature part as well as a summary of uh, we are going to do one summary as well summary revision as well of the whole lesson okay so till kingdom plantae i will be showing you all the screen i want you all to go through all the points which have been given so that you have a quick revision because we can't revise everything again okay so that is why i'm showing you the screen for few seconds and whatever points have been highlighted or that comes to your like it has been highlighted to you just read out that sentence so that at least some of the other things are going into your mind okay and look have a look on the examples which have been given because that is also important you should know the examples as well as characteristics okay so i'm showing you the screen i'm showing you the slides you have to go through all the points which have been given okay
just go through this hierarchy which has been given because this is important okay I want you to go through the characteristics as well as the examples given. This is about a uh, protester, kicking the protester. Go through all the characteristics of the kingdom planted properly, okay? And you should know this one differentiation that kingdom plante ke andar jo bhi plante is aate hai, like jo bhi, jo bhi plants aate hai, they are multicellular eukaryotes with cell wall because plants have cell wall. But when it comes to animals, okay? Animals jo hai, they are multicellular eukaryotes without cell wall. What are they? Multicellular eukaryotes without cell wall. Okay.
now whenever you start studying about any of the uh, kingdom you need to go through the charts which have been given here so this is the five kingdom chart which has been given other than that you will see that uh, kingdom plantica there is a chart and kingdom animalia also there is a chart which has been given so whenever you start studying on that you have to go through that okay Go through the characteristics and remember that division bryophyta it is called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom because this is one of the important you can say objective question dash are called as the called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom so those are bryophyta okay And Pteridophyta is one of the best group I can say. Now Pteridophyta may we have studied about the cryptogams and the phanerogams. Right? Cryptogams kya hote hain? When the plants are having the reproductive organs which have been hidden, then we call them as cryptogams. Okay? And when you can see that the reproductive parts of the plants, they are well differentiated, then we call them as phanerogams. So these are the two uh, different types. Whenever you are writing an answer on Pteridophytes, you have to go through this. You have to go through uh, like Pteridophyta Glicreo. You should not miss out on this cryptogams and phanerogams because this is important. Okay?
सी दिस इज द चार्ट दर आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट बिकॉज प्लांट्स को हम दो पार्ट्स में डिवाइड कर सकते हैं देर आर फ्यू और सम प्लांट्स वे वी कैन नॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट दैट प्लांट प्लान बॉडी यू कैन से इन टू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स लाइक वी कैन नॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट द रूट स्टेम्स एंड लीव्स देर आर सम प्लांट्स वेर वी कैन ईजीली डिफ्रेंशिएट द पार्ट्स ऑफ द प्लान ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वी आर डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग एंड दिस इज हाउ वी गॉट द फाइव डिफरेंट डिविजन्स ऑफ द प्लांट्स ओके आफ्टर दैट वी स्टार्टेड विद द सैनिमेलिया So I'll just show you all the things. So the first uh, phylum that we started under Kingdom Animalia is Porifera. Now Porifera means organisms with holes. So the organism who are having holes on their body, those animals they come under Porifera, and as I told you that they are not great. They are not non-motile means. they cannot move from the place because they are attached to a solid support okay and the holes or the pores they are present all over the body of such kind of animals which leads to a canal system okay now this canal system is going to help that animal in circulating the water throughout the body so that the it can also bring out the bring in the food and the oxygen all together okay and the animals who are having this uh, holes on their body the animals are covered with a hard outside layer which we also call it as a skeleton and their body is differentiated into tissues and we commonly call them as sponges and they are mainly found in marine habitats okay in the example has been shown of porifera we have spongilla cycin euplectella these are all examples of phylum porifera then we have celenterata this is a second phylum which is also called as cnidaria if you can see now your body the body of such animals they have like uh, you can see the body design differentiation as tentacles and all okay so if you see inside the body there is a cavity which has been present and their body is made up of two kinds of cells okay kitne kind two types ke cells se bante hain one is going to make up the cell on the outside of the body and the other is going to make the inner lining of the body okay and some of the species they are even going to colonize while others they are going to have a solitary like span jaise ki hydra ho gaya okay then jellyfish sea anemones these are some common examples of phylum cylindrata that we are having that is cnidaria okay and the first part that i have missed is this animals they live in water after that we have platyhelminthes now platyhelminthes ka i told you they are also called as platworms because their body is flat from top to bottom okay and if you see cnidaria and porifera the body of uh, the body organism like the organism of the animal is not that complex but in platyhelminthes the animal shape they are complex uh, complexly designed in uh, other than in other two groups we have considered and their body is bilaterally symmetrical meaning the left and the right halves of the body they are going to have the same design okay as well as they have three layers of cell and this three layers of cell they differentiate the tissue okay they can differentiate this tissue which is why we call such kind of animals as triploblastic okay so this allows outside and inside body lining as well as some other organs to be made and there is some tissue some degree of tissue formation which has been done okay but you will see that there is no through internal body cavity which has been found here okay please go through this like it is very much important that you go through the examples and all because whenever i i ask you about something when i ask asks you about something it means what like if i ask you the example of platyhelminthes you should know that they are called as flatworms and the example should quickly click into your mind okay so please go through the uh, uh, like go through the characteristics of phylum platyhelminthes and after that we discussed on phylum nematoda now nematoda also like it, uh, it is also bilaterally symmetrical as well as triploplastic triploplastic means it is made up of three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm okay and they are bilaterally symmetrical as i told you that when i divide them i am going to get two equal halves uh, and they are going to have the same design altogether okay
then if you see the animal as carus and vicaria you you can find it out that the body is symmetrical cylindrical rather than flattened right because in platyhelminthes the body was flattened but no here it is not flattened here it is cylindrical there are tissues which are present but there are no real organs although you will see that there is a sort of body cavity which is also called as pseudocoelom which is present inside them pseudocoelom means false body cavity is present inside them and they are very much familiar as parasitic worms which cause diseases okay what are they parasitic worms and they cause diseases such as there are certain worms which cause elephantiasis that is filarial worms okay and there are certain worms in the intestine as well which are called as round worms or pin worms so these are the examples of nematoda then next phylum that we have is annelida so annelida they are also bilaterally symmetrical and they are triploplastic it means they have three layers but if you see in addition they are going to have a true body cavity which is going to allow them that they will be packed into the body structure altogether okay so there is this extensive uh, extensive organ differentiation which can be seen and this differentiation we can say that it occurs in a segmental fashion how does it occurs it occurs in a segmental fashion where you will see that the segments they are lined up one after the other from uh, head to the tail can you see the segments on their body so there are so small small uh, segments which can be seen so they are, they have a segmented bodies and the segments can be seen from the top from the head to the tail part okay so this animals they are found in variety of habitats like we can found this uh, kinds of animals in fresh water marine water as well as on the land and earthworms and leeches these are some of the familiar examples uh, of this annelida okay then we have arthropoda and arthropoda has all the insects which are been included here so this is probably the most largest group of animals that we are having okay so this animals they are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented now i don't have to explain you the meaning of bilaterally symmetrical right so you will see that there is an open circulatory system present within them so that the blood should not flow in a well defined blood vessel what kind of circulatory system this phylum arthropoda have they have an open circulatory system so that blood should not flow in a well defined blood vessel and you will see that the cilemic cavity that is blood filled okay how is the cilemic cavity they are blood filled they are going to have this jointed legs and the word arthropod arthropoda may the word arthropod itself it means jointed legs okay so some familiar examples of this are prawns we have butterflies we have house flies spiders scorpions and crabs okay so these are some of the examples of them okay so there is a fortificancy which is present now next is what we had we have is phylum mollusca now mollusca is a group of animal where you will see that they are bilateral symmetrical uh, bilaterally symmetrical again then you will see that the cilemic cavity is reduced here okay after that you will see that there is little kind of segmentation which you will find on their body and here also they have a open circulatory system and there is an kidney like organ which is present for excretion purpose along with that there is a food which is which has been used for moving around okay so examples of of uh, phylum mollusca it includes snails and mussels okay then we have next phylum as echinodermata now echinodermata in greek like echinodermata is a greek word 
where echinose means hedgehog which means a spiny mammal what does it call what it is called spiny mammal okay and derma means skin so spiny mammal skin so the organisms which are included here they are spiny skinned organism what are they they are spiny skinned organism and they are exclusively free living marine animal what are they exclusively free living marine animals they are triploplastic and they have a silicic cavity triploplastic means they are made up of three layer and they have a silicic cavity which has been present within them and you will see that it, that there is a peculiar type of water driven tube system which is present that is going to help them to move around okay as well as they have a hard calcium carbonate structure now this hard calcium carbonate structure they are going to use them as a skeleton and the examples of this phylum echinodermata it includes sea stars and sea urchins okay now the next phylum that we have is protochordata now the animals who are uh, included under this protochordata they are bilaterally symmetrical they are triploplastic and they have a coelom coelom means body cavity okay so in addition along with this like they are bilateral they are triploplastic along with all these things they have new features of body design if you can see this animal looks totally different from all other animals that we are aware of right so they have a notochord that is present at least in uh during their lifetime and okay so after that you can see that notochord which i am talking about that is a long rod like support structure what it is it is a raw long rod like support structure cord means string so this support structure it moves along the back of the animal and it it separates the nervous tissue from the gut because it is a place for the muscles so that it can attach themselves and the easy movement can occur of that muscle okay so protochordates they may not have a proper notochord which is present at all stages in their lives or for the entire length of animals okay but protochordates they are marine animals and the examples of them are balango balanoglossus hardmania and amphioxus so these are the certain examples of protocord data that we are having okay after this protocord data we have vertebrata to discuss in detail so vertebrata they are going to have a through vertebral column as well as the internal skeleton what do they have they have through vertebral column and internal skeleton which which allows them to have a completely different distribution of muscles which are attached muscle attachment points to be used for movement okay what do the vertebrata have they have a through vertebral column as well as there is an internal skeleton which has been present okay now because of this vertebral column and the internal skeleton which is present it allows them to have a completely different distribution of the muscle attachment point so that whenever the muscles are attaching there the, they are going to help them and it is been used for the movement okay so vertebrates they are bilaterally symmetrical what are they they are also bilaterally symmetrical they are triploplastic they are coelomic and they are segmented as well so they are showing all the characteristics that we have studied till now right so they are like complex differentiation of the body tissue and organ now when it comes to uh, differentiation differentiating differentiating the tissues and organ they have a complex type of differentiation which can be seen within them now there are five different characteristics which have been given and all the chordates that we have all all the chordates are going to possess this following features so they are going to have a notochord okay they are going to have a dorsal nerve cord notochord hai dorsal nerve cord hai they are triploplastic they have a paired gill pouches and they are coelomate okay so now this vertebrates they are grouped into six classes how many classes six classes mein group kiya humne the first class is cyclostomata okay now this cyclostomes they are jawless vertebrates they don't have jaw so cyclostomata ke andar aise animals aayenge who are not having jaw so they are jawless vertebrates and they are characterized by having an elongated ill like body and a circular mouth slimy skin and are scaleless so they don't have scales present on their body 
okay they have a circular mouth and they and their skin is slimy okay and they are ill like body which has been found okay so they are ectoparasites or borers of other vertebrates what are they they are ectoparasites or borers of other vertebrates okay ecto means they live outside the body and that is why we call them as ectoparasites now there are some parasites who live inside the body they becomes endoparasites and there are some parasites who live in uh, outside the body so they are called as ectoparasites okay then petromycin that is lamprey and myxine that is hackfish these are the examples of cyclostomata that we are having okay and the body of the cyclostomata it is round and elongated like an eel can you see the body is round and it is elongated like an eel right so the paired fins are absent so cyclostomata ke andar the animals which have been uh, involved they don't have this paired fins median fins with cartilaginous fin rays are present okay there are no paired appendages appendages are also not present then the skin is soft and smooth and they don't have any scales uh, scales present on it so the skin is going to be soft it is going to be smooth but it is going to be devoid of any scales okay then spleen is absent in cyclo animals coming under cyclostomata exoskeleton is absent notochord is present and it is present throughout their life so this is one of the special characteristic that we saw ki uh, having a notochord is also uh, one of the important characteristics right so all the animals coming under uh, cyclostomata they are going to have notochord throughout their life okay then the second class that we have is pisces so if you can see all the fishes water animal they come under pisces so pisces are fish and they are exclusively aquatic animal right fishes are an aquatic animal so they are going to be exclusively exclusively what are they they are aquatic animals and the skin of the fishes they are covered with scales or plates so if you see the structure of the fish or the body of the fish you will come to know that the whole body or the skin it has been covered with scales and plates which will be observed and they also need oxygen for their survival right so the oxygen has been dissolved in the water and when they are uh, taking in the water they are taking oxygen that way right so the they obtain the oxygen which is dissolved in the water by using their gills okay the body is streamlined and they have a muscular tail which is used for movement so the tail which you can see of this animal right so that tail is muscular made up there uh, there are muscles which are present in the tail and their body is streamlined you will see there are certain linings which are present on the body of the fish okay so they are cold blooded and their hearts they have only two chambers now we humans we have four 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 chambers in our heart two atria and two ventricles right but the heart of the fish has only two chambers and they are cold blooded animals okay and we are we all are aware, aware of that fishes they lay eggs and we can think of many kind of fish some with skeleton made entirely of cartilage such as shark Now, shark is a kind of fish that is made up of cartilages, entirely made up of cartilages, just like a shark. Some is made up of skeleton, which is made up of both bone and cartilage, such as we can have it as tuna or rohu. And this is the example which has been given. The first example is labio rohita, which means rohu. This is the rohu fish. Then we have male hippocampus, that is the sea horse. Then we have Exocetus, which is called as the flying fish, and next one that we are having is anabas, which is called as the climbing perch. Okay, so there are many different types of fish or the aquatic animals I can say that comes under this Pisces part. Okay, then the third class that we have now these are more examples which have been given. So we have sing uh Sinkiporus splendidus that is called as Mandarian fish. Then we have Clophyrin jordani, which is called as angler fish. We have Taurus volitans, which is called as lion fish. Okay. Then we have this electric ray, which is called as torpedo. We have sting ray, and lastly, this is called as Claudian, that is dog fish. So these are different different examples of uh, the animals or the fishes which are included under Pisces have been given to you all. 
एंड द मेन थिंग इज लुकिंग एट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फिश नाउ जब हम फिश को ड्रॉ करते हैं वी आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ दैट सच काइंड ऑफ फिश ऑल्सो एक्सिस्ट राइट बट सिंस देर इज एन डाइवर्सिटी विच इज एक्सिस्टिंग अमॉन्ग ऑल डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म योर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द डाइवर्सिटी विच इज एक्जिस्टिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिफरेंट फिश इज ऑल टूगेदर राइट द यू कैन सी द फैमिली इज फिश बट दे आर फॉर द डिवाइड इन टू डिफरेंट डिफरेंट क्लासेस ओके सो आई होप दैट पाइसिस एंड वॉट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड साइक्लोस टोमाटा विच इज द फर्स्ट क्लास यू क्लियर विद साइक्लोस टोमाटा देन वी हैव पाइसिस यू क्लियर विद पाइसिस एज वेल एंड दिस आर द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एग्जाम्पल्स विच आर बिन गिवन ऑफ न्यू फिशेज आई नो दैट यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ मेनी ऑफ दैम बट स्टिल दोज आर यू कैन से इम्पॉर्टेंट ओके Now the third class that we have is called as amphibia. What do we call it as? Amphibia. Now the animals who come under this amphibia, they are different from fish in in the lack of scales. Okay, what are they? They are different from fish because this amphibian animals they don't have scales on their body. Okay, but they have a mucus gland in the skin. What do they have? They have a mucus gland which is present in the skin. and fishes have two chambers in their heart but amphibians they, their heart is three chambered what are they their heart is three chambered okay so how is respiration taking place in this amphibians so respiration ke liye they either uh, have gills or you can say they can have lungs as well which is present for respiration and amphibians they lay eggs what do they lay they lay eggs okay so amphibians ka example is rona tigrina which is the common frog which we know about amphibians are animals who are found in water as well as on the land okay where are they found they found in the water as well as on the land so example of amphibians includes frogs toads salamanders these are some common examples of amphibians that we are having and remember this things about amphibians hyla which is a tree frog we have toad we have salamander these are all examples of amphibians okay and the example uh, now remember about them that they are three chambered their heart is three chambered okay they have a mucus gland in the skin their body doesn't have scales on them okay respiration takes place through gills or lungs and they lay eggs and amphibians means they they are found in water as well as on the land okay after that the next class that we are having is reptilia so reptilia these animals are cold blooded and they have scales and they breathe through lungs theek hai now fishes were also cold blooded so this reptilia is also cold blooded they have scales on their body what do they have they have scales on their body and they breathe through their lungs okay so while most of them they have a three chambered heart crocodiles have four heart chamber so like us we are also having four chambered heart crocodile also have a four chambered heart okay so they lay eggs all the animals under reptilia they are going to lay eggs with tough covering and they do not lead to lay their eggs in water unlike amphibians now all the amphibians they go and they lay their eggs into the water but like them repti reptilians they don't have to lay their eggs into the water itself because the egg that they lay it has a tough outer covering okay so snakes turtle lizards and crocodile they all fall into this category okay now see the next class that we are having is apes now this apes दे आर वॉम ब्लडेड एनिमल अभी तक हमने जो भी क्लास पढ़ा था दे वर ऑल कोल्ड ब्लडेड एनिमल बट द एव्स दे आर ऑल वॉम ब्लडेड एनिमल एंड दे हैव अ फोर चेम्बर्ड हार्ट वट डू दे हैव दे हैव फोर चेम्बर्ड हार्ट एंड दे ले एग्स वी आर ऑल अवेयर ऑफ एव्स लाइक एव्स के अंदर वी हैव ऑल द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट कम टूगेदर ओके सो एव्स के अंदर दे आर ऑल वॉम ब्लडेड एनिमल्स एंड दे हैव फोर चेम्बर्ड हार्ट they lay eggs and there is an outside covering of feather can you see all the birds they have feathers on their body right so they have in like on the outside there is an covering of feathers which have been seen they are having two four limbs which are been modified for flight why do they use their four limbs 
so that they can modify that forelimb and they can help and that forelimb can help them in flying you all know all the birds fly right so that is because of the feathers and the forelimbs that they are having okay now how do the birds they breathe so they also breathe through their lungs and all the birds that we are having they fall into the category of apes okay so we we got one category as animals who are uh, underwater that is fishes we have pisces then we have animals who are amphibians who are living on land and who are also living on the in, inside the water now apes we have where all the animals they are all included like you can say uh, they are all flying birds birds right now next and the last one that we have is mammalia and mammalia includes we humans so we humans are warm blooded animals and we are having four chambered heart what are we we are warm blooded animal and we have four chambered heart okay also the animals that come under mammalia they have mammary glands for the production of milk to nourish their young ones now how is our young ones being nourished by the milk of the mother right so we humans we are also having this mammary gland through which milk production takes place and that milk has been used to nourish the young ones that is the small children right so their skin has hairs as well as sweat and oil glands right we have skin hairs on our skin as well as we have sweat and oil glands which are present right so most mammal mammals they are familiar to us but they produce live young ones produce live young ones however a few of them like platypus and echidna the echidna they lay eggs so some of the amphibians we have now they still lay eggs but they are amphibians so some like kangaroo they give birth to very poorly developed young ones so kangaroo ke young ones they are very poorly uh, developed you can say and the some examples have been given here like cat is cat belongs to this class mammalia we humans belong to this class mammalia whale rat bat we, they all are the animals that are been included in this class mammalia okay and the sc uh, scheme of classification of the animal is been shown so this is uh, the classification that we have already discussed if you remember now animals we have two different types of organization first is the cellular level of organization and second is the tissue level of organization so cellular level of organization pe we have porifera tissue level of organization pe we have like three parts like we have pseudocilum uh, it includes nematode cilum uh, cilumate it includes middle mesodermal cells which are from single cell which derive from a single cell during growth of the embryo and we have cilums which are formed from the pouches which are pinched off from the endoderm so further they are divided into if the notochord is present that comes under chordata if there is no notochord then that comes under echinodermata okay and here the mesodermal cells which are arising from a single cell during the growth of the embryo that includes annelida mollusca and arthropoda okay and now this chordata is further divided into two that is we have if the notochord is present in at least the larval form then that that includes this protochordata and if the notochord is replaced by the vertebral column then that includes vertebrata okay now this vertebrata is further divided into six classes that is we saw all the jawless and ill like circular mouth scale scaleless animals they are all included under the cyclostomata right and the pisces it includes the exoskeleton of the scales we have exoskeleton of the bone and the cartilage which are breathing through the skin so that includes the pisces after that we have this amphibia amphibia has gills in the larvae okay then uh, gills in the larvae lungs in most adults and slimy skins which have been present so this is amphibia wala group after that we have this exoskeleton uh, reptilia reptilia has all the exoskeleton of scales which are laying their eggs outside the water after reptilia we have apes where the exoskeleton is made up of feather they lay eggs and they are outside the water and flight is possible in them so that includes the apes then we have this mammalia where the exoskeleton is made up of hair okay the external ears mostly giving birth to the young one okay so this is what we have discussed all about uh, you can say
okay so i want you all to go through this chart once so that you can have an idea on how it works how it exactly works out. okay so before studying about this kingdom animalia you have to go through this chart and then you have to start okay now we have this scientist named as keralus linnaeus okay who is he keralus linnaeus that is karl von linne he was born in sweden and he was a doctor by profession who was he he was a doctor by profession so he was interested in study of plants and at the age of 22 he published his first paper on plants okay at what age at what age at the age of 22 he has published his first paper on plants and while he was serving as a personal physician of a wealthy government official he has studied the diversity of plants in his employer's garden okay and later he has published 14 papers and he has also brought out the famous book which is called as systema naturae from which all the you can say fundamental taxonomical researches have taken off okay so his system of classification it was a simple scheme which was used for arranging the plants so that they are able to identify them all okay so remember about this uh, you can say carl linnaeus okay okay now we have this nomenclature topic to discuss and there is a question which arises here why is there a need for a systematic naming of living organism why there was a need to name y'all so the same question is why there is a need for systematic naming of living organism that is why the living organisms have been named okay so as you might be able to appreciate it will be difficult for people speaking or writing in different languages to know when they are talking about the same organism right if i am like as i gave you an information not an information like if i'm describing about something i'm telling that it is having okay uh you can say if i'm telling you that i'm talking about a certain fish so if i'm telling that they are having two legs two uh, hands will you be able to understand i'm talking about whom no right so that is the thing which is being needed to understand okay so for if i'm telling that two legs are two hands so you will get confused ki i'm talking about whom so that is the reason i'm telling you okay so if i tell you the name that i'm talking about the rohi rohu fish okay you get a clear picture okay i'm talking about that so if i have to appreciate something i'm going to do the same thing right so this problem it was solved by agreeing upon a scientific name for organism in the same manner that chemical symbols and formulas for various substances are used the world over now we are all are all aware of the chemical symbols and the formulas that we are using right so same way or uh, they were all you can say
सो वी वर ऑल लाइक यू कैन से कि हम एवरी वन अग्रीड फॉर दिस एंड वॉज डन ओके so the scientific name for an organism is thus unique and can be used to identify it anywhere in the world okay so the scientific name that we have is very much unique and once we get the name it can be identified all over the world right so the system of scientific naming or nomenclature that we use today it was introduced by carolus linnaeus sor in the year in the 18th century itself okay so scientific name of an organism is the result of the process of classification which puts it along with the organism which is it, which it is most related to okay but when we actually name any species we do not list out the whole hierarchy of group which it belongs to theek hai agar hum ek species ki baat kare to hum wahan pe ek pura group nahi bata sakte ki which species belongs to which group right so instead we are limiting ourselves in writing the names of that genus and species of that particular organism so worldwide it has been agreed that most uh, that both this names they are been used in the latin name where are where are they used they are used in the latin name itself okay so i hope that you are clear with this nomenclature term as well now the next thing that we are left with is the seven questions which have been given okay we will be discussing on those seven questions now but here is an activity for you all where you need to find it out okay so this is an activity for you where you need to find out the names of animals and plants in as many languages as you can okay so this is something that you will love doing so you have to find it out the name of tiger peacock ant neem lotus and potato okay so you have to find out the names of all all the animals in as many language as you want okay now we have those six questions to discuss so this is an another activity which is again given to you so find out the specific names of any five common animals and plants okay and do those animals they have anything in common with the names you normally use to identify them okay so this is also an activity which you need to go on to now see this is what we have started so you know that we have discussed on how the diversity of the life form has been classified and how the classification is helping us in identifying the characteristics of all the five major kingdoms that we are having right whether they are prokaryotic cells whether they are eukaryotic cells whether the cells are living singly or they are organized into a multicellular form and they are forming a complex organism right then whether the cells they have a cell wall and if they are having cell wall are they preparing their own food these are some major characteristics that we find it out and on the basis of this characteristics what are we doing we are classifying all the organisms into five major kingdoms right so the five major kingdoms which have been given by rh whitaker sir is kingdom monera kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay so the classification of life form is always related to their evolution so we have started the lesson itself by st by studying about the evolution right so plantae and animalia they are further divided into subdivision on the basis of increasing complexity with respect to body organization 
सो किंगडम प्लांटे और किंगडम एनिमेडिया को हमने और भी सब डिविजन में डिवाइड किया हुआ है बिकॉज द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इज इंक्रीजिंग डे बाई डे विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दर बॉडी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so we have divided kingdom plant into five groups that is we have thallophyta we have bryophytes we have pteridophytes then we have gymnosperms and angiosperms these are the five main divisions of kingdom plantae okay and kingdom animalia we have divided them into 10 groups we have porifera celentrata which is also called as cnidaria we have platyhelminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda Mollusca, Echinodermata, Protocordata, and Vertebrata. These are the ten groups of Kingdom Animalia. Okay, so after discussing on Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Animalia, we had this binomial nomenclature system, right? Where this binomial nomenclature is making an uniform way of identifying the vast diversity of life. which is existing around us okay so this binomial nomenclature it is made up of two words we have a generic name and we have a specific name so these are the two words by which this it is made up of okay now i hope that you are clear with it i want you all to go through this because this is the main summary of the lesson that we have discussed so i want everyone to please go through this once and after this we are going to discuss on the questions which have been given so see the first question is what are the advantages of classifying the organism okay wait give me one minute yeah so what do you think what are the advantages of classifying the organism if we are classifying the organism what is the advantage that we are getting so i'll write it one by one on the screen and i want you all also to take a note of it okay so when we are uh, classifying the organism the common features of that animal or the organism can be studied right so i'll write common features can be studied when we are classifying an organism after that you can write that we can study this the study of scientific experiments is simplified right so the study of scientific experiments are simplified okay then you can say that the interaction or the interrelation the interrelation of human with other entity so whatever kind of relationship the human is having with other entities can be interpreted right after that i can say that dependence and interactions can be studied so these are some of the examples 
or advantages of classifying the organism okay and whenever we are interbreeding this uh, entities or we are having a cross breed between this entities we get a modified like when it when we are modifying it genetically it is going to pave the way for commercial applications as well okay so these are some of the advantages of classifying the organisms that i have written here now how would you choose between two characteristics to be used for developing a hierarchy in classification so the basis like of start of the hierarchy it was formed by the gross character well if i say there are basic steps which we take care of like i'll write it here now for instance you can say that human beings are categorized under vertebrates as they possess the vertebral column as we are having this vertebral column we are like categorized under this vertebrae okay then you can say that for categorization of tetrapods okay after that for tetrapods we are going to see the existence of the four limbs okay so for tetrapods existence of the four limbs is taken into consideration okay then if in case of mammals the mammary gland is the required part right wait so these are some of the characteristics which we use so that we can develop a hierarchy in classification okay after that the third question that we are having here we need to explain the basis for grouping the organisms into five kingdom now what do you think we need to check the number of cells which are present first of all what are you go we are going to see number of cells present it forms the first criteria then after this number of cells next is the arrangement and number of layers present okay so i'll write arrangement and number of layers present after this arrangement a number of layers we have classification uh, like existence of the cell wall whether they are having the cell wall or they are not having the cell wall okay so existence of cell wall is the third basis after that mode of intake of nutrition whether they are autotrophic whether they are heterotrophic right then we consider the organ organization level 2 right so these are certain criteria which we use which we use or this is the basis on how we are grouping the organisms you can say how we are grouping the organisms into five uh, five systems 
so this is how we are doing it okay then the fourth question that we are having is what is the major uh, division in plant a and what is the basis for division so we all know that there are five divisions that we have discussed about kingdom plant a what are those divisions can anyone tell me so it is thallophyta the first one is thallophyta then we have bryophyta okay after bryophyta we have pteridophyta pteridophyta ke baad we have gymnosperms and angiosperm right so these are the five main divisions of kingdom plantae that we are having and the basis of classification if i write for thallophyta the basis of classification is like body wait like body for bryophyta the body is divided into leaf and the stem right so i'll write the body is divided into leaf and stem for pteridophyta what do we see yes pteridophyta may the body is separated into root stem and leaf okay so i'll write the body is separated into root stem and leaf after that gymnosperms they are seed bearing and they have neg seeds because gymnosperm ka meaning e hai kya neg seeds angiosperms are also seed bearing but their seeds are covered okay so they have covered seeds so i hope now you have understood the basis of classification of all the five divisions that we have of kingdom plantae okay now the next thing that we have is the how are the criteria for deciding the division in plant it is different from the criteria for deciding the subgroups among animal okay so one of the major you can say one of the major specification to categorize the plant i want you all to take a note of this what i am writing what i am telling categorize plants into thallophyta bryophyta is their cell structure okay after that gymnosperms and angiosperms they are classified on the basis of the viability of the seeds right so i'll write that as well gymnosperm and angiosperm class are classified on the basis of viability of the seeds visibility you can say okay so this is how we are dividing the thallophyta and bryophyta with respect to the cell structure gymnosperms and angiosperms with respect to the visibility of the seeds okay so the morphological characteristics they play a very important role in plant class classification okay an animal classification ko here we have cytology we consider that as the primary and the more minute structural variations are taken into account when we are discussing about animals okay so this was about the plant how we are grouping the plants now about animals if i say so first point i'll write is 
we are considering the cell layer of the animal okay that is cytology then morphology these are some of the significant features which we consider while we are classifying the animals into different groups okay secondly i can say that for this the presence and absence of various features it decide the classification of higher hierarchies okay so these are the certain criteria which we include for dividing the plants and for animals as well okay so i hope this much is clear now the next question that we are having is explain how the animals and vertebrata they are classified into various groups so now this is going to be a big answer if i write it okay so i'm not writing it but i'll write that vertebrata has two important subclasses okay which we included as pisces and tetrapods and wherein when we see that the organisms who are belonging to pisces their subclass they are further classified into two so i'll write the classes of the uh, vertebrata that we have studied so we have studied about pisces which includes all the fish right then we have discussed on uh, amphibians reptilia aves okay we have uh, tetrapod also you can write if you remember the first one that is the tetrapod okay now here it is named separately and lastly we have discussed on mammalia okay so these are the three different classes into which this vertebrata has been further subgrouped into and we have already discussed on the characteristics or you can say the characteristics as well as the examples of this classes so you can refer to that okay so i hope you are clear with all the basic details that we have studied till now in this lesson uh, that is diversity in living organism okay now we com we complete your with this lesson diversity in living organism and i hope that you are clear with kingdom plantae kingdom animalia all the classes all the division all the phylums and all the characteristics are very much clear to you all okay now we are going to start with the next lesson in the next part okay thank you everyone